Hi all and welcome to my new video related to Bitcoin education. In this video we'll discuss about our, that we live in a world with inflationary money and deflationary technology and something is wrong about this. We will deep dive in the video. Let's start as always this presentation is for educational purpose only. It is not a financial advice. And the reference book is uh, the price of tomorrow why deflation is the key to an abundant future is written by jeff booth and uh, is one of the best book i recommend in order to understand bitcoin actually in the material that i'm providing for the 100 hour study to appreciate bitcoin there are eight books and this book is one of the uh, one of them let's start then to discuss about the uh, our economic system and we have uh, and the fact that we have an old economic system because uh, our economic system systems were not built for a world driven by technology where prices keep falling in fact uh, like Keynes economics and other economic systems that we have they were built for a pre-technologic area when labor and capital were inextricably linked an era where we made money from scarcity and inefficiency that area is now over but we keep on pretending that those economic systems still work. What worked with before will not work in the future. In fact, technology is moving too fast and it will only move faster from here. We need to build a new framework for our local and global economies. And soon, or the same technology that has the power to bring um, abundance, abundance to us and our world will instead destroy the world. In fact, today we live in a world with inflation where assets price increase over time. And you can see housing is a classic example. A, a house, the you see example, uh, the price in US that costed around 30K, $30,000 in 1969. In 2020, it costed around $380K uh, dollars, $380,000. And on the other side, we see instead that technology is deflationary and uh, here is an example from statist about the cell phone in the last years but also the cell phones the first cell phones were costed two thousand um, dollars in 19, 1988 and now with many more features with much more power they can cost also 100 200 300 dollars and uh, in reality so deflation is when you get more for your money um with with time with deflation a currency becomes more valuable because um, its buying power goes up in relation to goods and services with deflation holders of currency are winners since their dollars can buy more goods and services in the future than they could today Uh, technology is uh, making uh, its way into everything and it is moving into every industry. Therefore, why should we not expect both abundance and price deflation in everything around us? If technology should be driving everything cheaper, why is life getting more expensive? Very few people are making this question and making this question to themselves because we live in this world with Keynes um, economy that is saying the more we spend, uh, uh, the better it is. And also 2% inflation is good inflation, but it is wrong. In real, in, if we had good money, then uh, price should go down because technology is driving everything. We become more productive and technology is advancing every year. So the price should go down. And uh, in real, in, but it's not like that. Everything is mostly going up. In fact, all over the world, rent, housing prices, fuel, food, and many other costs are rising. And in fact, but it's not natural. The rise in prices is artificial, driven by an enormous rise in credit and debt. So it's the rise of credit and debt that is driving. Uh, uh, the rising prices and it is wrong that the prices are keep increasing year over year and we have already too much debt in the world which also paradoxically make the problem harder to solve in fact the debt combined by with deflation is a toxic combi uh, combination because borrowers have to pay the same uh, for their interest payments while earning less 
So this raises the real value of the debt, making it more unlikely to ever be paid back. So now we, we in reality, we should live in a deflationary economy, but uh, consider we have so much debt, uh, living now, moving now in a deflationary economy will make the debt situation even worse because uh, it will cost more in the next year, the debt. And um, defaults soar and credit is destroyed when uh, um, the debt is costing more and more, leading to severe depression and economy. Just to give some numbers, in 2000, the year 2000, the total debt in the world was around $62 trillion and the world economy was about $33.5 trillion. Since 2000, uh, 2000 the world economy has grown from in 2018 from uh, 33.5 trillion to 79.5 trillion and to achieve this growth the total debt has grown to over 247 trillions of dollars uh, as the third quarter this in 2018 it means that it has taken 185 trillions of do of global of dollars of global debt to achieve only 46 trillion of global growth the marriage of growth today is uh, nothing more than a debt fuel spending beach. So yes, we grow from 2000 to 2018, but the debt, uh, the total debt grow much more. That said also, debt is not only bad, it can be used to grow wisely and funding um, a smart long-term investing investments. A business that takes on debt to invest in automation gains, in automation gains more leverage against competitors and can pay back that debt with a better return to the business in the future, thanks to the automation. These are in fact debt should, uh, credit and debt should remain in the society, but only good debts. But there are also many bad debts and which are the bad uh, debts are uh, is when um, a business continues to spend more than it earns or invest its debt in things that don't, don't 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 provide economic return so the debt becomes a weight on future growth as current dollars need be need to be allocated to pay for servicing costs or of the interest or payments at some point the weight of the debt be becomes unbearable and the business is forced to restructure or close, which, ups, which wipes out all of the debt, in turn harming those it is owned to. So overall, in an economy, it is the same, uh, the same as a business. An economy can grow faster because of that same leverage or credit applied to it, pulling demand forward by increasing what can be spent today at the expense of what um, of paying for it tomorrow we are always every time we take a debt we are always favoring today versus tomorrow because tomorrow we have to repay the debt people and households have more money so they spend more money in business economies grow at a faster rate but this money that money needs to be repaid and um, Ray Dalio, in his book um, Principles for Navigating Big Debt Crisis, affirms that there are four levers that policymakers can pull to bring debt and service level down. So we have this debt and we need to be pulled down because years ago we took debt. And uh, there are four ways in order to decrease it. And um, which are, first, austerity, spend less. Second, debt defaults restructuring third the central bank printing money on other guarantees the fourth transfer of money for those who have more um, than they they need to those who have less than they need so much higher taxes for the rich and ray dalio conclusion is in uh, in the end policy policy always print and this printing is making the things worse because then years from now the debt will be higher and you need to print more in fact, the 2008 housing bubble and crisis, it was not housing itself that caused the 208 bubble. It had, if it hadn't been housing, it would have been somewhere else that credit was flowing to. The problem was so many credit were flowing into the house. The continuing rise of debt that cannot be paid back was the hearth, the hearth of the housing crisis and will be the hearth of the next crisis as well. A bubble pops up when people wake up and realize that the debt can never be paid off. At that point, credit is removed and because easy credit was the main thing causing the run up, the run -up Assets collapse. 
It is what led to the bubble in technology stocks in early 2000. It is also what led to the crisis in Greece and to the crisis in Venezuela today. A financial system based on credit is just an exchange of money today for money later. I give you this based on credit. I give you a dollar today and temporarily lose the utility of my money in exchange for having more later. This is how it should be. But we have, we are having the, the opposite, the exactly opposite. The benefit of more money today and less tomorrow as you pay back the loan with interest. So we are sacrificing always the future for the current status. And uh, there are also four components for uh, GDP, another topic, to calculate the GDP. The, and uh, one is consumer spending or personal consumption, C, investment, I, net export, X, and government spending. And uh, the mathematically formula to calculate GDP is quite simple. It is the sum of the, fo the four factors. In order to have high GDP, also the government will always be in favor of government spending and consumer spending. Therefore, it will, pre it will print and apply, it will apply quantitative easing when, whenever possible. In fact, the quantitative easing refers to the act of injecting liquid, liquidity into an economy by a central bank. In order to inject liquidity, new dollars need to be created and need to be delivered into the economy. Many people refer to the first part as printing new money, uh, though, though the money does not to actually need to be printed, it can be just be given as balance sheet um, credit by a central bank. So in reality, it's no printing of paper money, it's just a balance sheet, uh, you increase the amount of money that the central bank has. And for example, the US Federal Reserve balance sheet has expanded from just 900 billion in 2008 to approximately 4 trillion in 2018, an absolute amount of new money. We already discussed in many other um, um, videos how reality should work. Uh, and so far we have defective money, so fiat money where dark governments uh, central uh, central banks that can bring can bring new money the situation will not get better to have a better situation we need money that cannot be printed so money that don't devaluate don't devaluate over time we had gold for several years for centuries then gold was a substitute with uh, paper money because it was not possible was not so much not so good in portability and divisibility because it was hard to move from in space and also hard to divide. But now we have Bitcoin, that is the best form of money we have ever had. And with Bitcoin, we would not have as money where the supply cap is limited at 21 million and where we have programmed scarcity. There would have never been the crisis 1929 or the crisis 2008 because the uh, credit uh, would not have been given. There was no chance to print new money. You cannot print more Bitcoin, a part of the one uh, that is programmed to, to create. And we already have created around uh, cre um, already 90.9 .9 or 91% of all Bitcoin have been mined. So I hope um, this video helped you to understand that uh, there is something wrong with having a technology that is deflationary, but money are inflationary. We are used to think that is normal because it's the world where we live, but it is wrong. We should live in a world with deflationary money. Many thanks and uh, see you in one of the next video. Bye.